Hello everyone, welcome to Honesty Hour. Today I have my giggling friend Declan Europa Quantoy. Hello everyone. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. To those of you who attended school with me, Declan needs no introduction. But I'm going to assume most of you are not 19 to 20 years old. Okay Samuel, reintroduce me then. This is Declan. Declan is a charismatic young individual. I knew him because, so Gershon, who we've previously had on this podcast, I, I first saw you because you hung out with Gershon a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I don't remember us meeting. That's because we're such good friends that it happened naturally. Okay, wonderful. Well, yeah, and then I met you because you sort of were an integral part of one of the cultural activities I took up at school. Oh, I remember. Because I, I joined drama in th towards the end of grade nine. Yeah. And by then you were already sort of a mainstay. No, I was a mainstay who was not anything special. Yes, but you were there. But I was there, you know? But you brought something special with your vibe because you were definitely different from everyone else. Like you weren't the typical, and I put people into boxes, guys. This is one <laughs> thing you need to, but, but you didn't fit any of my boxes. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah. And so it was like. Oh, this is interesting. And then I met, uh, like, because drama has all the, the quirky people. Like, the people that are too wacky to be in the cool club. But then they're too arrogant to hang out with the nerds. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Listen, I will never be able to put any one of them in a box. Yeah. I don't understand them just as much as I don't understand myself. But it's a beautiful mix of, like, unique characters. Anyways, mm. there's a reason that I have you here and not any one of the rest of them. Although you are all beautiful people. Please don't date me. But you weren't beautiful enough to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> so Declan and I became friends. Um, we had a lot of similarities, but in many ways, I was like, we're, we're very different in the choices that we make. Yeah. And the opportunities we choose to go for. I'd say I'm a little bit more conservative in, in nature. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. I would say I'm more of a... I just do anything because I can. See, now this is interesting because one of the ways I describe Declan is I describe him as a living rock star. And he knows this because I think I've wished you on a birthday before and said yes. something like you are literally like... No, I think it's when I jumped off the mountain you were like, you're yeah. in the dream. <laughs> so do you want to give some context to that? Why did you jump off a mountain? Well, you know what? Um, I'm not going to say I jumped off of the mountain because I was depressed. I say... I <laughs> I say I do all of these things that are relatively dumb in nature, but mm. you know what? You gotta say yes to life, or you're saying no to living. That's See, this is not the first time I've heard this from you. Is exactly. This... That's that's my new motto. That's now any opportunity I get to do anything, mm. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna jump off a mountain. I'm gonna um, snorkel with seals. I'm mm -hmm. gonna pet a, a lion shark. I don't know. But you drive. You ride horses now. No. Weren't you on a horse at some point? I was on a horse at some point because I could. I had okay. the opportunity mm. to be on the horse and I did it. So you just take these opportunities wherever they ever, like present themselves yeah. to you. So you did this at, at school already, or at least started to show signs of doing this because you, you did a, a lot yeah, of public speaking. Towards the latter half of school, that's mm. because in the beginning when I was fairly young, I was unsure of what my purpose was in the universe mm. and even just... In general, yeah. what is Declan Europa Quanto? Yes. Is he just a fly on the wall, a dancing shadow? See, but the fact that you're already presenting yourself as an idea, like that's some rock star stuff. I mean, you know? I guess. Because other people just go like, you know, person. You walked around with a book at high school <laughs> called Declan's List. No, no, no. It was called The List of Fabio. Sorry. There we go. Oh, yes, of course. We never called you Declan at drama. Your oh, name no. was Fabio. Yeah, absolutely. Why was your name Fabio? Um, well, when I was in grade nine, our drama teacher was Porter. She said, um, Declan's name doesn't suit him. Hmm. Declan looks like a young Italian bachelor. And from this point on, I dub him Fabio. Nice. I'm sorry my voice is cracked there. Can, can we edit that out? <laughs> No. <laughs> Super. We'll just leave it in. Yeah. But, but at least he looks like a young Italian bachelor. Yeah, my voice still cracks, but I'm young and beautiful. And from that moment yeah. on, everyone just referred to me as Fabio. But it's a role that you played brilliantly, which I didn't actually think of at the time. But 
you were playing a character between scenes in drama. Um, which is, which that's is actually, like, that's deep. That's an interesting point that you brought up because no one has ever noticed that. Declan Europa Quanto compared to Fabio is two completely separate entities. Okay, what's the difference? Well, m- me, naturally, I'm quite introverted. I'm shy. I'm not outgoing. I'm not the person that jumps off mountains and does all of these crazy yes. wild things. I'm none of that. Yes. But when I was presented with the... Uh, this is going to sound a bit ridiculous, maybe even far-fetched. But when I was presented with this character of Fabio, of mm. a guy that can do anything he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it. Mm. Whenever I took the chance to be him, I would... Okay. Yeah. And so this is restricted to the opportunities where Fabio is appropriate for the moment. No. Okay. This became a problem when I could just... Switch. Switch instantly. So even like something small like doing an oral, mm. I could never do an oral mm-hmm. in class ever. I would want to cry and break down. Really? Yes. And it was only in like grade nine when we did an unprepared talk. Yeah. Um, I was only like made aware of the fact that I could do this now because I have mm. this Fabio thing. Um, we did an unprepared oral mm. and I was asked to do something about um, sports. And I knew absolutely nothing about sports. <laughs> and I thought, how am I going to get a good mark yeah. talking about sports? Yeah. I think the topic was something like, um, do um, audience members play a part in actually motivating the players of a team to the win? The fact that you remember the oral topic. I remember a lot of things that yes. I'm not supposed to. Anyway, so now I was like, I don't know. What is sports? Who is sports? I don't know any sportsman by name. Mm. And so I started like comparing sports to Star Trek. I was like, <laughs> you know what? I, as an audience member, yeah. am not going to yell at Spock how to pilot the Enterprise mm. because I know he doesn't care. He's yeah. going to do what Spock wants to do. Yeah. And, 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 and Michael Beckham is going to kick the ball the way he wants to kick it. <laughs> Michael Beckham. And you know what? I thought that that was no. Yes, I said Michael Beckham and I said Wayne Ronaldo. That's and, amazing. And everyone laughed yeah. because apparently those are amalgamations. Yes, of, yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't know that. No, it's fine because it shows that you, like, you took it outside of sports. It was larger than sports I at took all. it to something I understood. Yeah, well, they say great minds speak about ideas, mm. right? So not like the people are irrelevant. The people are pieces in the puzzle. It's about the grand idea. Exactly. So when you say... I am an introvert. Does the the Fabio thing, is it like a mask? Almost that. And I don't mean mask as in pretentious. Uh. I just mean mask as in maybe shield is a better way to use it. Where you can catch on a lot of like nonsense. And it's almost like insurance or protection. <laughs> because like that's just... Because there were plenty of times at school where you would do wacky things, right? Okay, now, listen, yes. before we talk about the wacky things, I okay. just want to talk about the mask thing. For a while, it was a mask. Mm. It was to shield my insecurities mm, mm, mm. and to hide behind this idea that I'm not afraid of anything. Mm. And so off, after a while, it became a shield. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. now I was given this platform where I could now do everything I was afraid to do. You had license. I had license. I had a license to kill, essentially. <laughs> now, what are these weird things that I've done and gotten away with? No, it's just like when I think about cringe. Mm. <laughs> no, this is not. <laughs> that's not. Uh, I I didn't associate you with cringe. Okay. But when I think about the idea of what cringe is, yeah, I think cringe is something that I see someone else doing that I think to myself, I would never do that. Okay. Okay. And that applies to even the things that I've done in the past. When I look back at them and I cringe, it's because it was something that was out of character for me. I know that I had no business doing something like that and I would never do something like that again. So that's why I cringe. You had the ability to do things that I would never think to do, you know? Yeah. You, um, once (laughs) we, Declan and I had the, the pleasure of, do you remember this, presenting a, um, I believe it was some sort of cultural day, but we were celebrating South Africa. Oh no! The national anthem came up, and it was, it, lo- it was on the loudspeaker. And this guy for the national anthem, because I think someone put like maybe a yacht beat yeah. to the back. Yeah, we, I got the band to do it. Yeah. Oh yes, the band, the band played band it. it. Yes, you're right. So the band played, and like uh, Jamie was the drummer of the band, was yeah. doing like this liquor colored beat. Just Absolutely. You know. Anyway. 
Um, and Declan starts like getting the school to get on their feet. Like he's shouting at people, stand up, you stand up. <laughs> I remember I ran into the audience with the mic. I was like, sing, <laughs> sing now. He's giving people the mic and telling them to sing and making everyone dance. And the people are like going for it. And this is when everyone had like, this was this weird um, idea that putting a chair up while there's a party is cool. <laughs> so everyone's chairs are in there. Everyone's phones in there. There's a few crutches in there. <laughs> 2017 was a weird time. That was, no, that wasn't 2017. It wasn't. It? That was 2019, my friend. Ah. I only, I only started public speaking 2018. Oh, okay, okay. You forget our first thing that we ever did was in 2017. That's yes, when I was yes, still yes. a nothing. Um, <laughs> nothing. And that's but before you get into that, okay. sorry, I just want to finish the, the mm. story, right? So Declan's getting everyone up and dancing and he's like center stage dancing, jamming away. I'm thinking I would never be able to do this. I get a picture. Someone sends a picture to me the day after. This is a picture that they took while the school was busy jamming to the national anthem. So you see the band on the stage, you see some dancers on the stage, yeah. you know, vibing. You see Declan like running in the middle of the hallway, just like doing his thing. Um, by hallway, I mean like in between the, the aisle. Yeah, the, the aisle. aisle. Yeah. And then there's me <laughs> and I'm in, I'm on the stage because we had to present I could have sworn that you were just like standing there. I was literally standing in the corner, not moving a muscle. <laughs> I was completely stationary. I looked as, I've never seen, cause you know what pictures are. Yeah. Pictures, people don't move in pictures. Exactly. I have never seen someone look so stiff on a picture. <laughs> Like I looked like I was not moving and it looked like everyone else. And that's because it was a reflection of reality. Yeah. Um, cause I was very uncomfortable with, with movement. I right. still, I suffer from chronic stiffness. No, I suffer feet. from chronic stiffness and do left feet. But you dance anyway. You do these things. I've I recently, cause I was trying to find you online mm. to no success, by the way, I saw you do a crab dance. With one of your Where friends. Did you see that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. I wasn't doing a crab dance. I was doing a crab Some sort stance. Of mating I was, ritual. No, I was trying to fight them, you know, like a crustacean. Yes, that explains it. That, mm, now it makes sense. <laughs> Where did you find that? I, um, I did a deep dive on uh, all of your friends. <laughs> I might have stalked a few people. I'm sorry uh, that you couldn't find me personally. I don't, I don't ever. A... Now this is interesting. Mm. I can swear that at some point you had a social media presence. I did. I remember Gershon following me on Instagram saying, who's behind this account? And it was you. Yes. Um, I was always annoyed by the fact that Gershon didn't have a social media footprint. So I got him on Instagram and maybe we'd post once a year mm. and it would always be a, a very similar photo. Yes. Yeah, it became a running gag of sorts. It was always like a, a nice side profile or yeah. like from the from the side and, exactly. and with like some wacky But captions. his but, Instagram died when mine did. Which makes sense because they had the same creator. Exactly. Why did yours die? Um, mine died not because... Okay, no, it's going to sound terrible. But people generally are terrible. <laughs> you okay. know? Yes. And social media became such a toxic platform because everyone is just... It started to feel to me like everyone was just being a bit self-obsessed at okay. the time. Because this was maybe during lockdown. Yes, during lockdown. Okay. And this was when everyone was just posting about themselves and like, okay, now I want more followers. If you don't follow me back, I'm not going follow you. And mm. they were just, it became a very unpleasant place to be. Okay, but is there no way that you can maybe remove yourself from the noise? That's why I removed myself from Instagram. Okay, I removed like myself permanently from yes, the noise. Okay. I didn't have a problem with Instagram. I had, I had a nice following, mm. but I didn't like posting. Yeah. I didn't like um, giving other people smoke. You know, <laughs> if you want smoke, do something more <laughs> worthwhile than post a photo of you shirtless <laughs> on the beach. You know, are you one of those people who looks at the social media first and then goes, let me evaluate this. And if it's worth my like, I will give you my like. And if it's not worth I'm it, act like, I'm actually quite easy. I was yeah, quite easy. Yeah. I was like, if, the, if this is a pretty photo, I'm going to like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if it was anything that was just like... Someone's feet. Why do people do this? 
Why don't people post the feed on Instagram, Samuel? There's a market. Is oh, my good, to say. oh my goodness. And I was I was recently on Instagram again on some one of my friends' profiles just mm. to see what I've been missing. Mm. Just to catch up, to stalk a few people who I've of missed. Course. Yeah, but now I see that Instagram is like a, a shop icon where you can buy things and there's reels and stuff and it's just moving too quickly. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. Which uh, is funny because you are, what, 20 years old? Yes. How is Instagram moving too quickly for you? I don't know. I remember a time in 2015 where you could just like and comment on things. Mm. And now it's just like... But everything's becoming, everything's morphing into each other. Exactly. Like all the social medias look the same. Like YouTube has YouTube shorts, which I can't differentiate between that and TikTok. Listen, I've never been on TikTok a day in my life. Mm. But a YouTube short is something I can watch for hours on end. Which means if you had TikTok, you'd probably... But I won't download TikTok because mm. I refuse... Self-respect. Self-respect, you know? <laughs> Standards, Standards. And, and dignity. I spend hours just sitting on the toilet watching YouTube shorts. <laughs> so specific. Is that an overshare? No, no, no. Because like I, I do the same thing. Okay. I just haven't told anyone about it yet. Well, you see, I can say these things and there aren't consequences. Because Fabio... Exactly. No, I mean, the, the gag stops after school, I'm assuming. Fabio, the, the bit, but then by then it's morphed into your part of your personality. No, it didn't even morph. Um, mm. Like the story I was getting into before, 2017, yeah. Yeah. Um, you either have it or you don't in okay. the terms of performance. You always had it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well. I, I might have lost it recently. <laughs> you always had it, but I didn't. Yeah. And I had to be someone who had to work to get it. Mm. And I spent years trying to get there and I was always like, you would never be enough. Mm. And I auditioned for parts in um, Shakespeare festivals yeah. to be at the Baxter school shows, but I would always fall short. Mm. And I never knew why. And then in 2017, you and I did a bit together where you were the lead and I was essentially just a guy at the back. Um, you wore a dress. Yeah, the, that's... Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like known as the guy who wore the dress. And I was like, mm. I refuse yes. <laughs> to let this... This is not how my legend dies. Exactly. But you were so good because you had such an incredible control of the crowd. And then where you would, oh, I think my character at the time was Alfred. And you were like, Alfred, put the dress on. And I put the dress on and then everyone started laughing. And then I took the dress off and you were like, no, put it on again. And everyone lost their mind. And for maybe two weeks, mm. no, maybe even a month, people would call me Alfred. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. And that was just strange because like I knew what I could do. Yeah. I just didn't know how to do it yet. I hear you. Yeah, but then in 2018, yes. You um, came to the four. I came to the, yeah. You sort of, you know, there's announcing yourself. Uh. And then there's kicking the door down and <laughs> saying, I'm here. You know? Yeah. So that's Did I kick the door down? Yeah. Pretty comprehensively. I don't even know how that journey happened. It was just like one day I thought, you know what, maybe I could be on the student council. And I remember because when... When Declan signed up for the student council, by the way, one of my teachers was so mad that you got on the student council. I'm not going to say who. Which one? No, no, you have no, to. No, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. No. Now I'm not even going to tell you afterwards. Listen, if that teacher is listening to this <laughs> podcast, I will find you. Now I'm definitely not telling you. Anyway, I just... <laughs> <laughs> so I did my very first speech in 2017. That was for the student council. And at that point, I fully inhabited it this Fabio persona mm. and I just went out there and I was like just having the best time ever yeah like obviously I'm dying on the inside because introverted Declan doesn't has never had so many eyes look at him before yeah. and now he's managed to capture the entire room but he's also dying inside mm. and after that is that not a weird feeling being on the precipice of like control and then and the falling apart yeah exactly. exactly and then i finished and everyone erupted like i did mm. the best thing they've ever seen before yeah and it was strange because i don't remember it at all Jeez. i don't remember being there mm. i don't remember what i said mm. i just remember saying something yeah that must have captivated them and then i got on the student council and a year later 2018 is when miss ching yeah Mrs. Ching, sorry. Mrs. Ching wanted me to do an announcement. And I was like, I've never done this. Yeah. I mean, I've done the speech for my grade. 
There's like 200 people in the grade. Now yeah. I have to talk to about a thousand and 200 people. And also you have to remember that your grade is, there's a, you have a lot of friends in your grade. Chances are in the 1,200 the rest of the delinquents that went to Norman Henshawood at mm. the time. No like, offense to Norman Henshawood. No, we but like you. the people that weren't in our grade, there were a handful of people that I, um, whose company I enjoyed and the rest <laughs> of them I all looked upon as like, not down on them, yeah. but just like, not my cup of tea. I get you. Mm. I get you. I mean, each to his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now I did this speech because Miss Cheng was like, you can do it. I believe in you. Mm. And she pushed me to do it. Mm. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to be the best they ever was. Mm. I'm going to be better than anyone who has ever stepped foot at that podium. That's drive. And you know what? I remember doing it. And then I remember you coming to me saying, Declan, that was the best thing I've ever seen. Mm. And I was like, oh my goodness, I did it. It was genuinely like Declan had a way of getting so lost in the moment that you just believed him. I think it's a sign of not even so much a good actor as a good speaker. Mm, where um, you're just totally invested and in whatever comes out of their mouth, you don't doubt for a second. You exactly. Know? Even if I'm saying something that is completely stupid, I can get the audience to believe me because they know I'm passionate about what I'm doing and they, saying. Yeah. I didn't ever go on the stage with a piece of paper or notes on my yeah. phone because I wanted that connection. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be relatable and that's how you get through to the audience. And the, that was something that I could do that not a lot of people could or not a lot of people tried to do. Mm. I always thought there was an element of, and, and it's not maybe you specifically, so much as when people are part of drama mm. and especially when they're good at it, there's, there's a part of us and maybe I'm wrong here, but I know for me personally, there's a small part of me that likes the attention I get when I'm on stage. Really? And I, uh, there's a small part of me that feeds off that. Yeah. And I think that may be an element of narcissism. Right. Because essentially I mean, we, we're pretending to be other people so that people can, well, so that they can get a message, but yeah. also so that they can enjoy yeah, have a good bringing, time. Yeah. Have a good time. And and I don't know. I always thought maybe there was an element of narcissism to your personality. All right. Um, and not a bad, not, you didn't walk around thinking like, I'm the only thing that matters. I just thought there was this thing where like, oh, the people love me, you know? Yeah. And, no. and maybe it was a thing, but when I speak to you one-on-one, -on -one, you don't like give off the vibes of like, narcissism can i explain it yeah. to you it's it's weird because i know i'm good okay and i know that i could even be the best and i know that the people love me mm. or they did <laughs> at some point <laughs> at some point but i dreaded the attention mm. i tried my absolute best to run from it i see like if people are gonna be like you were cool I really thought you were funny, then mm. it'd be mission accomplished. Um, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring something that was different, something that could make my entire life goal is to, at some point, ensure that I can rid people of unhappy emotions. Mm. Like if I can just make one person who's having a bad day smile, for me, that's mission accomplished. That's job well done. I that's see. why I did what I did. I see. And when people say I did it because of my ego, I would be like, no, if I had it my way, I never would have done any of it. I hear you. Yeah. I, but people, obviously, they only see things from their perspective. Mm. And unless they speak to you about it, they won't ever know that side of it. So let's go back to this teacher, right? <laughs> the, 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 particular, the particular thing that you, you would, it was a school council elections as well. I think mm. maybe 2018, I'm not sure. 2018 was the one in front of the entire school. Yes, yes. Mm. This was the big one. That was the big one. And um, I, I remember our friend, Jordan, who I've mentioned more than... Jordan King? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he okay. did a, a speech where he spoke three languages. I was like, damn. He did. Like, he did. you deserve to be on it. Just like for the effort alone. <laughs> and when he spoke Kosa, our Kosa uh, students, uh. they went crazy. Like he was, he automatically, I think, became a national treasure in that moment. But anyway, so his place was guaranteed. But then... You came, you gave a speech and it was such a Declan speech that we had become, the school had become accustomed to. So the response is naturally like standing ovation, people clapping and, and whatever. And this teacher just felt like 
this dude isn't even saying anything of substance people just like him because they like him and i was like yeah <laughs> maybe because it's supposed to be about substance in yes order. of course but in essence and uh, allow me to debunk <laughs> school council elections go for it it is a popularity contest and just like politics is a popularity contest yeah. and if you are popular i mean you, it's not like you you're gonna reject that exactly so i th- i think you made it work to your advantage if anything no what i, I don't i never wanted to do it if i knew that my position is guaranteed because of you what i've become okay. known for and that is why towards the end of that year mm. i stopped telling jokes i stopped trying to be a clown i stopped trying to be funny mm. i wanted to present things that were more serious mm-hmm. and that's why for that speech um for that election for the entire school i sort of took a more serious approach mm. i wasn't trying to be funny i was trying to yeah. be serious i was trying to bring across a point yes. a problem mm-hmm. that was serious we were divided and i wanted you know to be a part i didn't want to be the catalyst or be but, the person but the feedback was still and maybe that's she might have got it misconstrued mm-hmm. where the feedback was the same as like this was the the wild cheers yeah and the, exactly you know, and, and that's out of your control i think it's because i can i can wear both hats so mm-hmm. well and people don't get how that's possible i see mm. well <laughs> there's a funny story about school council elections where um i was sitting next to my friend ethan um and ethan he had his boys mm. and in the grade above us and it was their time to do the school council elections in front of the entire school and there was this one guy you know he he was he was just you could see he was you know one of the owens do you know what i mean when I yeah. Say that? yeah i get you um <laughs> and he prided himself on being one of the owens man and so he he said his speech and it was cool and whatever and i saw ethan tick his name because there was a list of you could see the name the number and the box so i saw him take his name and it's one of his boys it's one of his friends then there's a part where everyone has to just say their name and their number again so people can remember whose speeches they liked yeah. and who they want to vote for so you can see the name and the number on your page and his number was 21 and they gave the mic to him now he had done the hard work <laughs> he had done the time the hard yards he had said his speech he caught my friend's vote i know and he said um Hi, my name is whatever his name was, and uh, I'm 21. We savages, and he dropped the mic. <laughs> and he drops the mic. You know what happens when you? Do? It's like a pa, and like the feedback, and like just a horrible noise, and like I die inside for him. Like it's so cringe. I mean, I don't think anything of it, but a few seconds later, <laughs> I turn to look at Ethan. <laughs> scratched out the x that he put next to his name oh that's <laughs> like that is brutal. For anyone who's listening do not drop the mic at a public presentation not often not at the, an election <laughs> it's not a rap performance exactly and i think uh, f- during these election seasons what i hated the most was when people made posters when people mm. advertised and that's why miss now the teacher who did not like me <laughs> i have a little bit of a query to make with you i did not once ever blow smoke up my rear end mm. i allowed my personality to speak for itself you want to know how many times i said vote for me samuel how many times zero times you want to know how many times i said this is my number how many times? zero times i didn't need to do that <laughs> i think i understand why she doesn't like you now <laughs> i don't blame her i don't even like me <laughs> uh, no that's uh, yeah that's funny sorry okay so then 2018 yeah we had a significant experience we had a significant relationship yes mm. um it's funny also because i always used to when i caught you alone on the field you would be listening to your music by the way fantastic taste in music is one of the things we thank you so much. we bonded on like 70s 80s especially yeah this is just an announcement to the world alton john is probably no Pro- alton john is the greatest performer of all time just putting it out there that's wild because there's this guy named michael jackson who existed well michael jackson can suck one of alton john's golden shoes <laughs> that's a that's a heavy take ah but uh i will say i alton john's discography uh-huh. 
you you Declan used to do these things on <laughs> on WhatsApp. He used to do a top twenty countdown oh, I did, of yeah. his favorite Alton John songs until Alton John's birthday, maybe? Or did no, you just do it I randomly? I just did that because we were doing our prelim exams mm. and I was bored and I was like, you know what? Let's do fifteen days of Alton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he we counted down from fifteen. Mm. And when he got to number one, I noticed that my favorite Alton song still wasn't on there. What's your favorite Alton song? It's um your song. Well, you didn't put it on your top I didn't 15. put your song on my top 15, that is correct. And a lot of people had problems with that. Understandably so. It's a good song. It's more than just a good it's song. A, no, it's a fantastic it's song. song. It's, it's my song. <laughs> it, your song is so good. It's really good. But Alton John has such an amazing um, back catalog. Mm. Uh, he has a lot of hidden gems yes, that yes, yes, yes. not a lot of people are aware of. Yeah. And so that's where most of my favorite songs come from if i could do and this is i didn't plan to do this but just check out electric light orchestra <laughs> they operated at around the same time okay um you, you will know um mr blue sky is a very famous song of course yes. Mr. Yes. Blue sky. Mr. Yes. 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 they have one called last train to london okay whoever's listening to this go check out last train to london it's so flippin' good. I love how this conversation has just become an announcement. <laughs> but I heard it I heard it at the coffee shop once with okay. my friends. Oh wow. And I didn't even have Shazam. Because it's Shazam's the one that you need to use to get the Yes. Yeah. I just it was so good and then but it came to the part that I could hear this is the last chorus. I have to remember some words. And I remembered like a random sentence. Searched that in on Google and got the song. One of the happiest days of my life. Really? It, genuinely okay. such a good song. Anyway, no, really? Let me not type it too much because now you guys are going to listen to it and be like, oh, he was talking about this. Is anyone even listening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To those of you that are listening, I, I really I appreciate We appreciate you. you. Yes. Yeah. So, Baxter. Ah. <laughs> we went to the Baxter in 2018. We were grade 11 at the time. We were grade 11 at the time. And this for me was a big deal. This was a big deal. I had seen shows at the Baxter Theatre before. And for those of you who don't know um, Cape Town's, uh, I guess, theatre scene. It's one of the greatest. Yeah. There's like, so there's the Ethel Fugard's uh, Theatre, which yeah. is uh, in town. There's Artscape, which is also in town. And the then Artscape. There's Baxter, which is like Ronda Bashi mm. um, by UCT Middle Campus. Mm. Anyways, the Baxter is this prestigious place. It's like this theater that's on like multiple levels and it just looks so good. Listen, being a, a theater student, mm. like being a drama student, we worshipped the Baxter. Yes. This was like the place to be. The Holy Grail. The Holy Grail, you yeah. know? This was the World Cup for this us. This was the World Cup. And I, I've been to the Baxter a few times as part of the school, mm. but never in the capacity that you and I did. Yes. Like, I, Do you want to explain that capacity? Sure. I mean, I performed there in 2016 and I was an extra. I performed there in 2017 and I was an extra. Mm. <laughs> but by 2018, I was... A lead. The lead. I was, yeah, and your the character that you played. His I, name was the name of the play. <laughs> Doesn't get much more lead than that. And this was just when I was like, okay, I know what I'm capable of doing. This was like when I was getting all of these opportunities. Mm. But I've never ever been cast in a lead role before. Yeah. Every success I had, I got, I had to get it by myself. And now, Miss Porter, our drama teacher, mm. thought I was good enough to carry a show. And that gave me anxiety <laughs> because I still thought of myself as that as that guy who just wasn't good enough. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And you're still coming out of a place where, and especially, look, you have to understand that it's not like we were adults, adults mm. at this point. You're still dealing with like a whole lot of teenage. I remember at that particular point in my life, body odor. I, oh was, de I was dealing with a, a, a body odor crisis. I was experiencing a different hormone than you were at the time. Let's move on. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you get the lead in the Scottish play. I the, we don't say its name. Yes. We don't say it's bad luck. But the the hidden rules. Yeah. Um, do you remember the morning? The, I, I remember the morning we got in the bus. I was like, we wrote an exam that morning. Yes, we did. We wrote an I English. I think it was an English exam. Yes. How about That's that? amazing. And we, we had to write in the library we, because we were special. Exactly. We were we weren't like the rest of the no, peasants. No, what happened was classroom. we had to leave oh. school to go perform at the Baxter. Yes. We had to leave at like half past eight. So we started the exam fairly early. Yeah. Maybe half past seven. Yes, yes. 
And then... Because we were celebrities. You have to... Un- I'm joking. I'm I talking mean, nonsense. But, I mean, and they say I have an ego. <laughs> <laughs> but but it did feel cool to be... I was excited. I was to excited perform to perform at the back. So I was nervous because we had... Look, we had done about three months of solid preparation. No, I wouldn't even say we did three months of preparation. Well, the show was in April. And we were only got... Started practicing in Feb. Really? Yeah. Why does it feel like it was a rigorous? Oh, but it there was, was at some point we were every single day exactly. we were staying behind. And this was the most unprepared mm. Shakespeare festival I've ever been a part of. Really? Just because of how um, fresh and green the the new people were, mm. because this was the first time we had so many young people. Yes, we had about six grade eights. So there's three witches in the story. We yes. doubled up, so doubled there were up. six witches. We had a master stroke. And it was a lot of, there were a lot of females in mm. the drama group too, so we turned the role of Macduff, who is a man, to a woman. Mm. So that was cool Because we're very progressive. We are. Uh, we are. Norman Anshuet is there. Yes. It was at some point. <laughs> at the time that you were listening to this, I'm not sure where it's gone. <laughs> So, oh my goodness. So we were at the Baxter and I remember getting into the bus. The bus looked a bit shoddy, but shame. They were the same bus that took me to school every morning. Oh, and I appreciate you guys. Um, then we got there and they took us through the special entrance at the back. Which, Because mm. when, you, when you're a spectator, um, they take you through the main doors. Yeah. We went through the back doors we the where back you doors. could see... And for some reason, behind stages, it's always a mess. There's it always, is like, always a mess. A bunch of random like equipment but lying then everywhere. You and... look at the the sea of seats. Mm-hmm. You just see lights and red chairs, and yes. it's hard to believe that. But at the end of the night, all of these chairs will be full. Yeah, and we will be on the stage. It's a, it's a trippy experience, yeah. and that's not my finest hour in terms of vocabulary. Ah. And that's the best word I could find <laughs> to use it is it's a really trippy experience. But we got there. They send us down two flights of stairs. Yes. To our own dressing rooms. In our own dressing rooms. Now granted, it wasn't each person as the no, dressing no, no. room. No, no, no. We shared our dressing room with maybe four or five people. Yes. Because all the boys went into one dressing room and all the girls went. Well, I think the girls had like a few more dressing rooms. Yeah. They whatever. had two. One really big one and mm. one really small one. Yes. And do you remember it was... Particularly hot in the dress because the lights, those lights on the mirror and there were on. any windows. Yes. And I remember someone dropped a, a number on the toilet and Ooh. it was inescapable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how you want to start. And we were there for a significant, like we spent the day there. We spent the day there. We the got performance was what, 9 p.m.? 9 p.m. We got there at 9 a.m. Mm. We left there at about 10.30. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And we um, we had gone out for lunch as well. We went to Steers, yeah, which we was went down to the road. Oh my god, it's good times. Do you remember the, um, because we were there with a couple other schools, the ones that I can remember, we were, uh, San Susi was there. Okay, good for you. Um, <laughs> I don't remember any of them. Uh, Amy Beale Foundation was there. Good for you, Sam. You will know why Amy Beale Foundation was there I soon. Sh- um, and Worst School Strand was there. Okay. How do you remember this? And all three of them did, Romeo and Juliet. They all did, and yeah. we and were Macbeth. You know, we were supposed to open the show. Yeah. And then during our rehearsals, um, we did our thing, they did their thing, and then by the end of the rehearsals, the show manager, the show manager, the lady, I think her name was Kat. Yes. Kat was like, you know what, Norman Anshuet is closing us tonight. Yes, yes, yes. And also because you go from the monotony of saying the same three plays, granted, in very different styles. Do you wanna, do you wanna tell the audience about the best part of the Romeo and Juliet performances? We are going to get there. Okay. Oh, so boy. we have Worst School Strand to, if I can just explain this in terms of demographics, it's a white school of very Afrikaans. Mm. Um, so the accents are a little bit thicker yeah. when it comes to you know, performing, and but every- it's still, they used the correct lingo and whatever, yeah, but exactly. everyone had a, their own adaptation. Yes. And Amy Beale Foundations was like this, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was Kosa or Zulu, but it was a cultural ad- adaptation on, on Romanian. Which Zulu. I thought was a very unique take. I enjoyed it. I and enjoyed because it Because they even sacrificed some of the English dialogue and it yeah. didn't matter because like you enjoyed. It's Romeo and Juliet, we know what's happening. Exactly. Um, but then. <laughs> So for dress rehearsals, oh. they call everyone out of your dressing room. They say, come sit here. We're going to watch as the other uh, schools perform their play. Yeah. Amy Beale Foundation comes on. 
And it starts with like, you know, these drums and like they start singing and there's like the... <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm being disrespectful, but I'm, I'm trying You're to do it a story. In, in good taste. Yeah. Yes. This is what I remember. And then there's a girl. And she's dancing and she's jiving with the music and... Um, but... <laughs> let's just say... No, I'm... Uh, okay. How do I explain this? Her bosom was she wasn't wearing no wait okay <laughs> her bosom was um is moving significantly um in a vertical motion right. up and down and i wouldn't have noticed this if it wasn't there to be noticed she, she was wearing a loincloth at some point at some point the loincloth disappeared and fell off and we all thought collectively that is a mistake this girl has just revealed herself in public. And now listen, now everyone's losing their minds. <laughs> All of these pu- pre-pubescent teenagers are just going like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening. This is the greatest day of my life. I, on the other hand, was like freaking out like, Oh my goodness, someone get her a towel. <laughs> <laughs> because you thought it was a mistake, right? Yes. So then I... <laughs> So I didn't know. Am I supposed to look away out of decency? But like, but no, but now she's carrying on. She's not she stopping. She keeps dancing and she keeps moving the. And it was only was until she was naked for ten minutes we realized <laughs> this is part of the show. This was. It's, so it was a cultural take. It wasn't sexual, but because yeah. we we live in a westernized uh, and there's no way to avoid it. Exactly. We see boobs as like boobs you exactly, know yeah. and we don't see it as like just part of the female anatomy so she's bouncing up and, and like fair play they do the thing um and then i think my parents are coming to this show tonight and then i think my five-year-old brother and <laughs> seven-year-old sister are coming to the thing so it was They're quite in for a, a show <laughs> it was quite a because obviously that wasn't the highlight of the performance but she did it let me just clarify she dropped the the loincloth intentionally. intentionally yes. And she both performances she started out with it on and she let it go and that was it. Now I uh, in the car <laughs> did you guys see? Oh no, I felt so sorry for that poor girl. I was like, guys, come on, come on. No, I heard that too. Yeah. Um it was it was just a really cool experience. The the show itself, I remember I I did my thing. I remember the build up to the show more than I remember the actual show. True. There was a beautiful piano. Yeah, um, we were all having a good time. There was a guy who took us through warm ups. Yes, and you know what? That guy has been, oh my god, that guy has been close friends with Miss Boyd for such a long time. Mm. He's actually a director himself. So when he was done warming us up, he goes to Miss Boyd and he was like, You really chose um, a peculiar choice of character to lead your show. And Ms. Paul was like, oh, you mean Fabio? I was like, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, he's rather scrawny. And you want me to believe he can be a good Macbeth? And then Ms. Paul was like, just you wait and see. Ooh, the vote of confidence. I, did that make you feel like... I wasn't there. I, would... <laughs> I wasn't there. She told me this afterwards. Oh, of course, because that guy would have been a rude person to... Uh, to say that to yeah, my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the show itself, because the, the build up was amazing. I remember I almost tripped over. There was a... Macbeth's best friend, uh, Banco, Banco uh-huh. he comes to life again. <laughs> so a, a ghost of him appears. Yes. So I'm just supposed to, I've already died. You've which, already by the died. way, I died valiantly. You died. Fighting off people to protect my daughter. Your son, but whatever. We had girls. Okay. So, um, I, I have, all I have to do is walk back across the stage. Yes. And there's these uh, witches who are supposed to, like, unveil... The cloth that I've been hiding behind. Yes, but and they they got a bit too. They went low enough. Yes, and you t- took a stride forward. Yes. and almost took a tumble. I almost fell on my face <laughs> at the back. Imagine a ghost. Like it's okay if a human being, fall, but if you're exactly. supposed to be dead already, then you shouldn't fall on your face. You <laughs> because know? I guarantee you, all of the cast would have looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're supposed to just keep going like nothing. Exactly. Like you can't address the situation. Exactly. But thank you, Jesus. I stayed on my feet. I walked and off. And we put on a killer show. It really was amazing. I remember 
us backstage before we got on and mm. you and i were like losing it oh, we, we were like nervous. oh my goodness that we can't do this i couldn't feel my feet you couldn't feel everything else and then we go on the stage mm. we do our first few lines and we come back to the backstage area and now we're like wow now we're in it yeah now it's go time because the adrenaline starts pumping exactly. and this is probably like got something to do with the fact that I can't remember, and you also can't remember much of the actual show itself. It's Th- just the thank- adrenaline. Thankfully, my aunt recorded all of it. Really? Yes. I want to see that sometime. I'll send it to you soon. But like the adrenaline courses through your veins, and then you realize like I'm really here. I'm in the moment. You're still locked in on what mm. you have to do, and your performance. Can I say? And I didn't watch it from sitting back there. Mm. I had the privilege of watching it from the side of the stage. It was breathtaking. Um, Thanks, buddy. And I'm not saying that just because you're here, because afterwards my mom said, <laughs> my mom was supposed to be proud of my achievement said, no, you were good. Um, but that lead guy, <laughs> that guy who played Macbeth, um, were, and fair play because it was, it was a, a memorable performance. I appreciate that. And I feel like because I knew it was my first chance to show what I can do, mm. I really took full advantage of that fact. Yeah, and then the the next year we were gonna do Shakespeare Festival again, and I was I was excited to do it. Declan, then convinced Miss Boy. Oh, now let me tell push. you. Let me tell. The, okay. Let me tell. I'm gonna tell the story. Okay. So we were first discussing what play we would possibly do, and mm. I was like, you know what, we are good at tragedies. Let's do another tragedy. Yes. But everyone else, uh, mind you, that they were in drama for maybe a year, and I've been there for five years at this point. Everyone else wants to do a comedy. And I was like, you guys know what a Shakespearean comedy yeah. is, right? A Shakespearean comedy is not funny. It's it's the, clever. It's, yeah, but it, it, it's called a comedy because it has a happy ending. Exactly. Not <laughs> because it's supposed to make you uh, roll around laughing. Exactly. You know? And we were really good at like staging um, mass murder and tension deceit. With, tension was sort of our, yeah. That was our forte. forte. And now they wanted to do much ado about nothing. Mm. And I, at this point, was now on the exec of the student council. Yeah. And I was like, just, what is it? I was cumbered. Yes. I was cumbered. <laughs> we Googled that word before. <laughs> I, was, I was heavy burdened yes. at the time. Yes. I, had, I had a lot of things going on and mm. I knew that I didn't have what it took to give my best performance as a lead character. Because mm. now I'm at this point where I'm like, okay, a lead role is guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. And because your time was so heavily invested in all these facets, mm. it's like you have to now make a decision. So you you chose to generously pass on the lead role. Exactly. To me. I told Miss Porter, "Listen, I'm not auditioning for the lead." Yeah. She's like, "But why?" I was mm. like, "Absolutely not. I'm gonna audition for the secondary lead. Yes. You know, the backup lead. Yeah. And I want to push Samuel to be the lead." And she's like, "I didn't see that coming, but yeah. okay." Okay, let's give him a shot. And here's the thing, there's two love stories. So it's uh, it's one of Shakespeare's rom-coms. Yes. Now, if you have listened to previous episodes on this podcast, you'll know that when it comes to love... <laughs> oh no, I don't like where this is going. I I am woefully out of uh, experience. And it's not like you actually need to be in love. You just have to... Um, portray. Yeah. Love. But then how do you portray something that you don't really understand yourself? Exactly. Anyways... We got the female lead. Yeah. My love interest in the play. Yeah. And Can I, before, before, before you tell the story, mm. I would just like to say, like, while we were auditioning you, mm. you went out of the room and it was just me and Miss Porter talking, discussing mm. your performance. And I was like, that's Samuel, right? He's so good. He's amazing. Let's make him the lead. And she was like, you know what? I agree with you. And I was like, of course you do. And then I remember we went to Mr. Stoltz. Mm who was our biggest supporter. And we were like, Mr. Stoll, listen, Samuel's going to be the lead and I'm going to be the sidekick. What was his reaction? You were there with me. He, he, lost, he lost his mind. He lost his mind. Oh, I do remember. It he was did. in his office. It was in his yes. office. Yes. Mm. That was, yeah, oh, that's cute. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for remembering. Because now I, I feel nice inside. Mm. Um, so there's this female lead, mm. my love interest, and she messages me because we have this, uh, this scene towards the conclusion of the play. You had to kiss, right? Yes. I had to kiss someone also. Yes, you did. Yes, I did. <laughs> but that was fine because you, you had done it before. Yes? No. I would never mind. And keep in mind, she did not want to kiss me. Yeah, that's that's worse than my situation. Yeah, who would want to forfeit their first kiss for 
apply. Exactly. That's how I felt. But the female lead messaged me and she said, look, this fake kiss doesn't look realistic. What if we just kiss for real? And you know me. Who was the lead? I'm not telling you now. Oh my goodness. I can, I can remember this. I can't. Oh. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, thank you. <laughs> But she she tells me, she messages me, she says, let's just kiss for real. And you know, I'm not going to say, no, actually, <laughs> actually, I haven't kissed anyone yet. And I want my first kiss to be a memorable experience with someone that I treasure. No, you're going to kiss this girl because... Oh, I'm in grade 11. What kind of, I'm in grade 12. What kind of wimp says... Exactly. So I was Who like... says no? Sure. Give the people a show. I was like, of course, that's no problem. That's what we want to see. You Lol. know, because I'm, I'm casual about it. It doesn't... <laughs> doesn't matter to me Very and old. i was dreading i was like jesus please is there a way out of this and there was a way out of this because our principal canceled the show <laughs> because it was right before we started our final exams you know prelim prelims, prelim exams. but like prelims don't even matter anyway anyways you see how the lord came through for me definitely. he didn't come through for me it was my last show with the baxter you didn't get to kiss someone uh good that idea. didn't want good idea your, i didn't want to kiss her either i'm just saying Fair enough. Um, I hope if she does listen, she doesn't know we're talking I about her. I can't remember who she is. Yeah, me neither. Okay. But well, we value all people no, no, that no. we've worked with. We don't forget because you will forget what we forget because so much yes. things have happened yes. in the past few years. I mean, we were stuck at home for maybe two years. Yeah. And in that, did you notice, because I always saw you as a big extrovert. Right. But all of a sudden, you confined to the people around you mm -hmm. and i'm assuming you spend a lot of time with yourself yes i did and then did was that a difficult adjustment for you not at all um, because i always fancied myself an introvert so those three months of just pure isolation mm. bliss keep in mind i did have a, a girlfriend at the time yeah. and it was weird but i enjoyed being alone because i could and being alone for me it's cool because i can separate um, these ideas that are constantly being created by the mind, everything mm. that I imagine, I can separate that from reality. Nice. And that's cool. But um, yeah, towards that point in my life, I've now realized that I'm not an extrovert, mm. but I'm not an introvert either. Mm. I'm some sort of weird mix, mix well, of both. I found that we, we all have an extroverted side mm -hmm. and then we just some of us are more introverted than extroverted yeah. and i know like for me personally after this discussion once you leave i'm going to not speak to anyone because i'm <laughs> going to be so tired from social interaction because right. that's the introversion part of myself but that when, when having said that when i am social i am social to the max exactly. that i can be yeah and I, I didn't think that you were more introverted, but that's cool to unlock these, or at least for me to see from the outside, these layers to Yeah, you, because people you know? always thought I was very two-dimensional. I'm just there to give people a show. Yeah. But that wasn't it. That was just me finding myself. Mm. And I'm happy that I did because mm. I realized that Fabio wasn't a character. Yeah. It was part of me. Yeah. And both that and... Declan, you yes. know, you're now one. Yeah, they, and they can exist simultaneously. They can coexist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that's what I do every day of my life. I live a fulfilled life. Or at least I try to. That's amazing. I like where that is going. Thank we you. We shall speak again in future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back. Jeez, that's <laughs> kicking the door down again. Yeah, you know. But he will be back. Thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you for inviting me on the hottest day of the year. We did choose the hottest day of the year to film this. Yeah, I'm sweating buckets. Mm, you should come to Uppington. It's going to be fine. I... Anyways, thank you everyone for listening. I shall see you soon. And I cannot wait for what you do next. Thank You're doing you. a really good job. Thank you. I'm really I... enjoying it. Honesty hour. Thank you. I'm still on the edge of the name. Mm. I'm sure I can come up with something better for you if you just allow me. But <laughs> we will um, we will look into it. We'll in make future. we'll make notes later. Indeed, ladies Thank and you. gentlemen, this is Declan Europa Quanto signing out. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, bye everyone. <laughs>